Hey, what's up y'all? Welcome back to another video. This is another iteration of Tuesday Night Thunder, which is our local crit series here uh, near Boulder, Colorado. Um, so this one had even more people than the previous one and even faster. You know, we had a uh, few guys from Project Echelon, Automatic, Collegiate National Champions, Pro Gravel Racers, uh, you name it. They were they were here. So if you're interested in coming out to these, there's two left um, for the season. There's C, B, and A races um, that happen. So kind of whatever level you are, there's something there for you. And uh, yeah, so the 23rd and 30th um, are the last two weeks for this season. So definitely come on out is a really good time. So let's dive into this race footage. Um, as I said, it was a really fast race. We ended up averaging 30 and a half miles per hour. And this is with a two to 3% riser uh, each lap. So it's definitely really fast. I ended up averaging uh, 274 watts, um, normalized 306. So I was trying to be very efficient um, during this race because I figured it was gonna be really fast with the guys that ended up showing up. Um, so I was just trying to keep it smooth, kind of keep it in this top you know, 20 wheels, but not be too far towards the front to where I was having to respond to every attack um, that would go. And there were plenty of them. Skipping ahead, we're about 10 minutes into the race and another attack's gonna go. And I'm gonna kind of follow this one. Um, I was you know, in position, but I'm not going to overcommit to following any of these because the uh, Peloton is <laughs> super uh, motivated and there's tons of fast guys. So if I'm in position, I'll follow something, but I'm also not going to like spike over a thousand watts just to follow a wheel because this race just stayed fast the entire time, especially in the beginning of the race. And I was like, all right, if we're <laughs> going over 30 mile per hour average, I don't really think a break is really gonna stick unless there is uh, quite a few of the top level guys and all the teams are presented. So that was kind of more what I was um, paying attention to. But as the race would get fast, I'd kind of just filter a little further to the back when it's you know single file like this. And then once things would slow up, I would kind of just move forward um, and kind of get back a little bit further to the front where I wanted to be to stay out of the washing machine uh, in the back of the field. About another lap later, um, this automatic rider up ahead is going to attack and a Project Echelon and Primal Rider and Cliff Rider are going to follow. So. That's kind of an example of a threatening move, but as I said, you know, people are immediately bringing this back and uh, bridging up to the move. So, you know, I could have followed that. I was in position to and went over a thousand watts, uh, but really just decided to filter back and let other people close the gap. We now have about eight laps to go. And you can see things are strung out again. There's uh, some guys making a break up the road and that one kind of looks threatening. There's, there's a few guys there. I think there's also Project Echelon Rider in there. Um, so I'm gonna start moving up on the right side to maybe think about bridging. And uh, there's another rider that goes, um, but I kind of see people are gonna end up closing the gaff. Cliff wasn't in that break. Uh, so they're going to try and bring this back pretty quickly. And so, yeah, so I'm just going to filter back a little bit. Uh, you know, I didn't spike up a ton of watts. I only was doing about 400 watts um, and just really trying to continue to save energy because my tactics coming into this race was most likely just going to wait for the field sprint unless, you know, there was a really threatening break that I needed to be in that was going to go the distance. So that's really just what I'm going to be banking on here. And, uh, but still trying to <laughs> keep a close eye on this, uh, these bigger breaks that, you know, I think this one has about, uh, let's see, like eight riders in it. So those are ones that are a lot more threatening, especially when you're going at this speed, because it's going to be really hard for just two or three guys to, to hold the speed. 
And uh, but shout out to uh, Michael putting in a huge effort on the front to to bring these guys back. So uh, really, that's what you know. I'm just going to take advantage of these guys who are going to uh, bring these moves back because I uh, <laughs> that's not my forte. I was also riding solo today, so I didn't have any teammates or anything. And so my best bet is to just wait for the field sprint. Um, rather than wasting a bunch of energy. We are now coming into eight laps to go, and there's another move <laughs> going off the front. <laughs> this is just attack after attack the whole race, really. And uh, this one is also looking really threatening. There's a lot of teams represented, and this Waffles rider is just going to let the gap grow because one of his teammates is in that. So. I'm going to put in a little bit of effort here to bridge this. I just put in a real quick acceleration because I'm planning on just closing this gap all the way through the turn. I was kind of cornering faster than, than most people. Um, so that's where I was just, when these gaps would form, I would just wait for these really fast turns and close the gap that way rather than using a whole bunch of watts to do that. So, uh, so that was then uh, brought back, and then uh, now there's another one gonna go. Alex is gonna attack here on the left, and the group's really tired. It's been a really fast race, so this is a really smart move by him because these are <laughs> some of the most threatening moves at, at late in the race when everyone's tired and right when an attack was brought back. Um, so right now it's just two riders, but you can see a Project Echelon rider bridging up. Uh, Collegiate national champion, <laughs> uh, and there's going to be some more guys trying to uh, bridge up to that. But the peloton is kind of still tired, so everyone's just kind of chilling. I'm kind of just stuck here in the middle. And right now, though, it's really not too threatening. I th think there's just four guys up there. Um, so I'm just going to be patient. There's about six laps left to go. So really, this is probably going to come down to a field sprint, but you just never know. <laughs> and uh, so I'm just going to try to filter up here uh, just a little bit. And I'm waiting to see if someone else is going to uh, try to bridge up or try and bring this break back. Uh, but no one's really making a move quite yet. <laughs> so just kind of being uh, patient here. But I think everyone's starting to get a little antsy. And then now a cliff rider is going to put in an attack to bridge up and uh, then another rider is going to go. Uh, but I'm still just going to just kind of sit where I'm at um, and see if other people are going to uh, start working. We now have just over four laps to go and I'm, I'm starting to get antsy now. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm just kind of waiting to see. Uh, there's kind of two groups now, um, three guys trying to bridge up to the, I think about four or five that are further up. So now I'm thinking, all right, if someone else tries to bridge, I'm, I'm gonna try and maybe get on their wheel. And sure enough, the guy right next to me uh, is gonna put in an attack. Uh, another rider was also kind of making a move at the same time, but then it kind of just, <laughs> Uh, nothing ends up really happening. We kind of slow down immediately, so that was kind of uh, anticlimactic there. <laughs> and uh, we're still keeping it pretty fast, and so the field's getting strung out, but everyone's on the wheel, uh, so this isn't really going to be too threatening. So now I'm still trying to wait and see if it's going to be brought back, because Project Echelon has a guy um, in the break. So, uh, you know, coming into this race, I'm obviously the number one person I was going to be looking out for was Kate Bickmore, who's the Project Echelon sprinter, obviously one of the best in the country. Uh, so, you know, he was definitely the, the favorite coming into this race. But if they have a guy in the break, they're probably going to be content with this not coming back. And so this rider's going to kind of look around at me. And so I'm like, all right, I'll. Put in, I'll do like 400 watts to kind of keep things going, but I'm not going to be the one to bring this back. And really, the, the break is pretty close now, so I'm not as worried anymore. But finally, Automatic is going to get on the front and uh, really put in an effort here to 
start bringing this back because we're now coming into three laps to go um, and yeah I'm in a good position I'm close to the front but not too far to the front I'm kind of in between two project echelon riders so uh, really couldn't be in a better spot here um, and this automatic rider is gonna pull off after putting in a big effort um, and you can see the brake is really starting to come back um, but then <laughs> this Aussie rider is just kind of like letting the gap open up. So I'm not sure what was going on there, um, but he's finally going to uh, put in a little more effort here. And um, yeah, so the brake is right there now. Um, so it's really, you don't want to bring them back quite yet, but they're kind of already back. Um, so I'm just going to kind of like move to the left let people kind of pass on the inside because i don't want to be on the front what going into two laps to go and uh so yeah i'm just going to slot in here behind jake and just try to maintain my position sort of near the front um but as we caught the break they didn't really get past they just kind of stayed on the front so now I'm uh, and now I'm getting like filtered to the back, so I'm like, all right, time to uh, start moving up again. And that's the thing with these at the end of the race is if you're not moving forward, you're gonna be moving back, so uh, it's a real fine line. Um, but right on the left side of me is Kate Bickmore, so I'm like, all right, <laughs> just follow his wheel uh, coming into this last lap and see uh, what we can make happen. So. Um, which of course everyone wants to be on his wheel so it's gonna be a little bit of a fight and I wouldn't say my legs are feeling amazing at this point but I'm like all right end of the race let's go um, but then Cade's gonna kind of slide through this gap and so I'm not gonna be able to uh, follow him there and so yeah so I'm just going to kind of maintain my position by moving up on the the outside now we're final lap um, these are quick 1k laps and yeah so now I'm like all right time to move up again um, so I'm gonna move up on the inside here and then now I'm gonna be kind of getting back on Kate's wheel um, but then this automatic rider is gonna <laughs> try and uh, fight me for the wheel and so I'm gonna start eating a little bit of wind here uh, trying to maintain my position and then everyone kind of slows down a little bit through this turn, which didn't work out. And so now sprints are going to be starting and I go left, Cade goes right, <laughs> should have gone right. I don't know why they left this whole inside line open. I figured that was going to be closed, which is why I went left. And then I get pushed out wide here and <laughs> as predicted, Cade uh, wins and pretty easily um, and I end up rolling in for I think it was sixth place so um, overall not too bad of an effort uh, definitely was hoping to be back on the podium um, like the previous week but that's how it goes sometimes so thanks so much for watching um, I'll be back next week with another one of these um, so definitely get subscribed um, to see more of these and if you want to see more of my day-to-day -day, uh, stuff, you can follow me on Strava, it's linked below. Um, but yeah, thanks so much for watching and I'll see y'all in the next one.